Hello everyone, and welcome to another Community Async. This is Community Async number 19. We're doing some ludicrous speed. I'm here with Roz. Hello, Roz. How's it going? Hello, Willard. Are you ready for several versions of the same item to show up in wacky order? Behind itself? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, of course. I, if I don't see 32 swords during this, uh, I'm going to be disappointed, to be honest. I'm going to be livid. I'm going to be At steaming. At least 32 swords, 9 pieces of armor, and uh, 9 shields. No, wait, it's 4 of each. I got mixed up by the 3. So it should be 12 shields and 12 pieces of armor. 12 shields, 12 pieces of armor... 12 of everything. It'll be fine. We got a bow already in Link's ass. We got an ice rod already. We got post poetic. We got camera eye. This is <laughs> post poetic's first time on the restream. Camera eye's second, I believe. Um, camera eye, I, I need to know. I know you're in chat. I see your name. Can you tell us what, <laughs> what MSU pack this is? Oh, wait, is this Octopath? No. Yes. Maybe. I'm not sure. Roz can't hear it, because Discord broke. It's fine. <laughs> live a live. Oh, right, 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 right. You used this last time. I got you, got you. Thank you. Now I know. Roz, tell me, what is your opinion of Ludicrous Speed? Is this your favorite mode ever? I think it is a good idea, badly turned out in practice due to a limitation of the randomizer's algorithm. I'm listening. I'm listening. So, the issue with ludicrous speed, the premise is that there are four copies of all pieces of equipment. So, there are four bows, uh, four copies of both boomerangs, so eight in total, uh, 12 shields, 12 pieces of armor, 16 swords, etc. And the problem is that the algorithm of the randomizer is only able to create one single string of logic from start to finish based on all of the equipment items before duplication. And then the duplicates just replace junk. In other words, the key items that lock access, physical access to certain areas of the game can lock copies of those items behind itself. As yeah, every, a result, everybody loves can... a good like bow locked bow, right? Yeah. It's 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 funny every time you see it and you laugh. Tee -hee. That's, the, that's the whole point, right? You want to have a good laugh. Uh yeah, I, I, it could be kind of a kind of a nuisance. Because you, oh, like, you, you go fly. in kind of expecting, like, oh, man, I'm going to get all the items in five minutes and then just beat every dungeon. Because this isn't all dungeons mode. We have to beat literally every dungeon. So the question is really going to be how soon are we going to get uh, our go mode? And will it be under 20 minutes? Will it be under 15 minutes? The caveat is that the health you see on the screen is the limit of health. Period. There are no additional hard pieces or containers. So if, if you can handle six hearts and that's it, you uh, you can handle anything, really. Especially, like, we already got blue mail on post poetic side. We already got two bottles. I think one had a B in it, the other one had a blue potion. That's the other thing, is with there being as many random uh, bottles, like, is it... Or does it pick four bottles with content in it and then do like multiply each of those by four? Or is there just 16 random bottles with random contents in it? I think it's 16 random. I saw one with a B in it. I didn't. There's, there's a, a fairy, fairy. <laughs> so it's random each time. So we've seen a red, a blue, a fairy, and a B. We just need to see if it's a good B. We need to see a green like, potion anywhere. I like the divergence between these two. Mm hmm. Yeah, the, the Ice Rod bomb start on post poetic side was good. It's kind of funny in a mode like this that we're seeing <laughs> bomb escape, but hey, you know, if it works, it works. Um, we did get our Moon Pearl already here in Kakariko and post poetics on the way there. I think this mode just really just, oh, there's our hammer. <laughs> and there's our Dark World access. This mode just really pushes you to just hit density. Like, 
Yeah. Nothing really matters except density, because you know, you're not really going to go out of your way for, like, your catfish, your Zoras, your pet checks. Spike cave. Spike cave. Spiral cave. You could probably skip that. Doing the comfortably. Smith's check. See, there's a fourth bottle that Post Poetic can get, but seeing an empty bottle, that's bad. You don't want that. You want to go for one that has contents in it. You got a boots locked mirror, one of the four mirrors. Now, what I, could uh, end up happening is a mirror could be in, say, K45 or Graveyard Ledge. Oh, you want that? Out. Yeah, don't want to skip out on that. A uh, mirror could be in, like, K45 or Graveyard Ledge, inside Swamp, or if Swamp's a crystal, uh, behind in GT. And you never know. Yeah, never know. It's very possible. I think the, the one seed of this that I actually did complete was, I think I was a medallion for go mode, or finding out if TR was a certain medallion go mode. So I just like started go moding every dungeon and just kept my fingers crossed. It worked out in the end, surprisingly. Did not get bullied. There was so much potential for bullying. It didn't happen. It is very a... satisfying though, just where every chest is something good, generally. Yeah. Strange uh, euphoric sensation, like seeing, oh, it's a piece of item. It's not like a red rupee or mm -hmm. uh, a pack of arrows. But then at the same time, it di it, it has a diminishing return. Yeah. Because as you keep getting more stuff, you like, you're like, all right, well, just might as well just give it all to me. But then you start seeing, because in this mode, there's no, only certain items are like, reduced to like a green 20 i think um otherwise most items will still just keep showing up as is i think uh, i think any of the progressive items will start showing up as green 20s maybe if i recall an interesting correctly. choice from both runners to prioritize hyrule castle of all things as opposed to going to south shore you know mini yeah. Warm cave with all the goodies yeah it's uh it's almost kind of one of those things where it's like kind of just hard to break whatever muscle memory or like, you know, people have their routes that they just always do in any kind of standard open mode. They're like, I'm just going to do it, whatever. <laughs> then again, these asyncs are supposed to be very kind of casual, yeah. comfy, for the fun of it, as opposed to exactly. being sweaty, teddy, competitive tryhards. These, these are not sweaty teddies. No, that is not the point. Um, but it can be. I mean, that's that's the, the beauty of the these asyncs, is people can play them how they want to, if they want to go super tryhard. Oh, I don't even want to say super tryhard. That's that's rude. They want to become... If they want to don their, their red honking nose and be a clown and start skipping all of Kakariko, like a certain lock likes to do sometimes, <laughs> then you can. You can do that. And this is the mode to skip stuff. Because you're probably skipping out on another shovel. I can think of a few racers who would immediately, like, rush Eastern, and as soon as they gain Dark World access, rush Pod. <laughs> I've I've had a few of those seeds where you find your Dark World access point with a hammer or something over an East Palace area, and you're like, well, I'm here. I might as well just go. What a coincidence. Uh, looks like Post Poetic's doing just that. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, here's the thing, with that bow that I definitely marked, um, most what it could just go ahead and beat Eastern, and yeah, just head right in. Gonna miss out on those mitts that are at Maze Race, but there's a very good chance that another pair will show up along the way. I really do hope these runners both know that this is all dungeons. Camera, what are you doing? That's how it's done! Oh, two swords at Saha! <laughs> oh, green 20 already. Listen, you gotta go for the memes. If you got an ice rod going into Hyrule Castle, you gotta freeze the garden, hit a guy with their own guy. You just gotta. These are the rules. I don't make them. <laughs> gold sword already, man. Nine minute gold sword. That takes me back. Way back, back before progressive, progressive swords were even a thing. Oh, yeah. It was actually... The... Literally, when the very first race when they unlock, uh, when they released open mode, 
I, uh, I went, I still was like, oh, I'm gonna go to Uncle. Like, uh, like I'm playing a standard mode. Oh, there's quarter magic and the flute. Uh, Uncle had a gold sword for me, so that made the seed very easy. It was great. <laughs> Back in the could... original days of the randomizer where they didn't have progressive items so you could just find the tempered sword and hey that's my sword for the game yeah i don't need anymore i'm good i mean it would be kind of fun i honestly maybe even for like one of the one of the one of the weeks for league just do like a throwback yeah just, just, just for fun. Just history mode. We got to go back in time before a lot of the glitches that we can do now are were not allowed or not existent. Because so we got to go back before Harapot and Icebreaker and Diver Down. Back to the days uh -oh. of Ice Palace bomb jumps and hammer jumps. Gold swords on Uncle. Good old days. The golden years. So it's looking nice that uh, camera I found a uh, flute in the back of Escape. So this is gonna cut down on. Traversal across the world without mm -hmm. boots, anyway. Oh, it's there we go. Good mobility find until we uh, find the boots. And, and remember, the boots does also lead to a mirror at uh, Labor if we don't find another one. So you're kind of at this point hoping you find that. Hey, look, a mirror. There's a second <laughs> hammer. There was a second mirror in Eastern, so never mind. We're never getting the boots. These are not the ones that open up the mirror library. I would be absolutely shocked uh, if we, if, if these runners had a bootless seed, if that was possible. Um, another thing so tragic to point out, I see that Postpoetic is skipping the big chest and the vanilla big key chest, but to fit all of these duplicate items in, not only was ammo deleted from the game, uh, but so were, I think, all the compasses. So Maps I and compasses, I think? I think maps are still in, because we saw one in the back of Escape, but just oh, compasses. Oh, right. So there should still be more items here Eastern, but at the same time, we can just skip stuff. Who cares? <laughs> Better hope that that's the thing that you're not leaving behind. Oh, we got our first hook shot. We got hook shot, bombos, and uh, silver arrows. Another bow was here <laughs> in Mini Boulder Caves. So. Things are looking pretty good. It'd be hard not to want to go for the pot eastern, but I mean, now that you have this hook shot, you might as well just keep doing overworld. The dream of hitting go mode before you dip any major crystal or pendant dungeons. I know, right? Ooh, fire, fire rod! Okay, we have options, but I can't imagine Postback doesn't just go right into go right into pod. It's right there. That's what I would do. I'm actually the same way. Like if I oh well, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Is that our first? Yep, there's our first pair of flippers on the old man. I, uh, when I was picking out modes for the Asyncs, um, I, I never know what to pick, because I'm, I'm, we're still at a point where we're not doing duplicates yet, mm -hmm. so I'm still trying to pick stuff, and, you know, Ladder always comes up with some wacky modes. This one, I was hesitant on, to <laughs> two swords, <laughs> right here at Spectacle Rock, Spectacle Cave, funny. Um, I was a little hesitant about picking this mode, because I, to me, it just doesn't seem like a mode that's very interesting to an extent it's very autopiloty very just get the items and then beat the dungeons so it, it it's a good test of your skills of your execution skills i'd say i think Which... it also encompasses knowledge of how to loop things together properly true because if you manage to find everything that you did in cac Making the choice of whether you're going to go down to the South Shore or just straight over to Eastern like Post Poetic did. Mm -hmm. South Shore could have taken you into desert. 
which would have been equally your first dungeon finished. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the ability to route officially in this mode is definitely an interesting like aspect of it. I, I mean, despite everything, we're, we're still getting a very different set of uh, routes from both these runners. There's the mirror for Camerai <laughs> and a shovel. Another Bombos. Um, like, at this point, you know, Camerai getting over to East Death Mountain with Hookshot as opposed to Mir and finding the Mir <laughs> while uh, we get to see the Mir side on uh, post poetic side going up West Death Mountain and then going to East with Hammer. See if we'll pop into a uh, little her repair and clear it out, maybe. <laughs> Rush Thieves Town after Kakariko. Hey, I mean, whatever works. For uh, Ooh, uh, another medallion. For a bit, I was thinking if I wasn't too lazy, I was gonna maybe put together like a four-person restream for this, just because it'd be wacky to see, and because it's you know it's not a really thought-provoking mode. It's really just a, it's like a battle royale kind of mode. Everyone's running around just trying to find, be the first ones to find their goodies <laughs> and then beat all the dungeons as quickly as possible, which just sounds like normal randomizer, but maybe this house has a big gun. Maybe this other house has a bigger gun, you know? Do you ever get into, like, PUBG or Call of Duty War Zones or any other Fortnite? No. Did you ever play any but I was back into Unreal Tournament a long time ago in a galaxy mm -hmm. far, far away, so... I didn't have the battle royale in that sense. It was more of just here's a first person shooter deathmatch. Kill each yeah. other. Have fun. Man, I played a lot of played a lot of Halo, a lot of deathmatch, a lot of team objectives, stuff like that back in the day. Team Fortress Classic. Oh. I did enjoy when PUBG first came out. I remember me and some buds played that. I like I bought a new graphics card just to play it. And I haven't touched it since, because, you know, I don't have time. I got I to play Zelda. I don't have time for that. Zelda and Metroid, two parents that raised me. <laughs> That's all you need. Good uh, spread of crystals. Yeah. Very symmetrical for the most part. Yeah. Green Pennant Mire, Pennant Ice. I mean, I okay. doubt we're going to see uh, Big Bomb. That's another check that we're just probably not going to do. Post Poetic takes a dip against Moldorm. Whoops. Unfortunate that we're still missing Samaria to loop in TR. <laughs> Could you imagine? Just being able to do TR on your first trip up the mountain. How often I mean, does that happen? Isn't it a meme to find Samaria just in Buckshot Cave? Mm-hmm. Like the Did key we... inside is just over with the neighbors. Oh yeah, you know, just under the doormat, the usual. But who knows? Did we did Cameron check what the medallion was? Or he did not. Okay. okay. I mean, just missing Quake, that's, that's not a big deal. There's a- It occurs there's to not... me that uh, there was a vanilla ether medallion. Oh yeah, there was. <laughs> I mean, you know, at this point, that kind of stuff doesn't phase me anymore. I've seen it enough. Hashtag bad meme. The classic. Haha, -ha, vanilla. Haha, -ha, is this even rando? Haha. -ha. The thing is, when uh, when you're when you only have six hearts, but you have you know four bottles, one has a fairy in it. You have red mail, gold sword potentially. You know, but which bosses are like concerning to you at this point? Still. 
Cold Stare. Cold Stare does, what, two hearts with Red Mail if you touch the puffs? Correct. And one heart, I think, with the Icicles? Because Icicles do two hearts on Green Mail. So it should be half a heart. Half heart. Oh, yeah, quarter. Right. Mothula still, I think, is a is a potentially scary fight. Yeah. Um, just because a lot Moth of the... himself will deal half a heart, but all spikes will continue to deal mm -hmm. full heart regardless. Nice job with I like the little hook spin. Definitely. On camera side. I every now and then I want to go for it, but I'm like, I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna mess it up somehow. I'm gonna like hook Moldarm instead. <laughs> Or he's going to move away from you, and your spin misses his tail, and <laughs> then he just, turns right around and hits you in the head. I'm just going to get embarrassed. All right, Bombos, Shovel, so... Oh, and the mix. So yeah, Wolf Runner's kind of, uh, kind of tied up in items for the most part. The only difference, really, is the Fire Rod off of Armos. And the hook shot that was in Mini Mulder and Cave. I think those are the two big ones. So camera has got the hook shot over, po over Poetic, and Poetic's got the fire rod over hook or er, camera. Mm -hmm. For routing purposes, uh, would you would you uh, you what you'd group Skull and Thieves Town together real quick? Yeah. Swamp Loot. by itself, maybe Swamp and Ice. You could do that. Swamp to Ice, Thieves Town to Skullwoods, Mire to Desert, but mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, we're still missing the Cane of Samaria for true go mode, if you will. The true go mode. I mean, who knows? We could have a, a big key on the torch in Desert. That is a very GT. good point. Those are the... We haven't seen Quake. We haven't seen Boots, Mario, and... Those are the main ones. Pot is also just kind of a, a gross dungeon to dip in, in a mode like this. Like, you'd want to go mode this dungeon just because it's kind of lengthy to get through. You don't, want, you don't want a full and... clear pod. You also don't want a full clear mire. No. Having to check left go. side just slows you down. Mm-hmm. For sure. What is going to activate that flute that uh, they picked up in Death Mountain? Always a Samaria in Mire. I joked about this because during the last Ace we had a vanilla Samaria. Um, yeah. And I, when I was talking about this async... There's the joke that all, all four Samarias were going to be in mire, which obviously can't happen, but it would be fun. <laughs> I wonder, do you think this mode would be better with, like, full key sanity? Like, they're not duplicated at all, but just it's just a key sanity mode. Minus compasses with all the multiple items. I think you could pull that off. I feel cause... like it would balance things out a little bit more so you're not just getting stuff in Kakariko and whatnot. I think you would have to hard code which items you choose to duplicate. Because if you just duplicate the compass or pull out the compasses, well, I suppose you could also pull out some of the junk items as well. And then use those to suffice as where to place duplicates. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I think there could be a potential for if you made this. Uh, big small key shuffle. Now, how about a mode like this, but you also maybe not duplicate all the keys, but like add in. Can you possibly add in extra keys? Uh, you can at least add in or turn um, small keys to retro functionality. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> four, four swamp smalls. <laughs> Make it so. I, I've uh, I've been playing a lot of Majora's Mask Rando, and uh, I've been treating myself to 
Clayne in a mode where I start with uh, all the small keys and the big keys. It's just so much nicer to go through dungeons when you don't have to worry about opening up every key chest. Oh yeah, especially like small or snow head. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of those dungeons are kind of rough. Getting the big key in that one is just a mess. Having to lift that center call, knock out some of the <laughs> wheels to it. Mm -hmm. It's funny because like the the blitz settings, which which I've been using, I've I've never once actually beat Snowhead the intended way. Because there's like some cheeky skips that you can do that aren't even like a glitch or anything. It's literally just a like a a, a jump. Um, that you can do to skip having to do any of that platforming. I mean, it's like a rando, it's more of a rando thing because, you know, obviously you're not going to have hookshot when you go to Snowhead, but having that hookshot. two shovels that I just saw? Maybe. I did also see, I think the third mirror was in, in the back as well. You know, I bet we should go check that shelf. That's probably never going to happen, is it? It would be... Kind of a long play. A little bit. Long odds to gamble on shovel. You'd really want to loop it in with like Smith Chain if you're doing all of that. Mm -hmm. But nobody wants. You're not going to do Smith Chain either. Yeah, all of that <laughs> is still just going to be slow. That's what I'm saying. Like with uh, full key Sandy, then all of a sudden these one off modes or checks are not as bad. Not altogether an outrageous play. Let's see this moth fight from Post Poetic. I was worried I saw Post Poetic charging up a spin, which is not going to do any damage on moth with gold sword. Though, technically, the gold sword shouldn't do anything against moth. Thank you for the rando devs for fixing that. Yeah, thank you. Because that would be a. Could you imagine getting a moth with the gold sword and being like, yeah, you gotta use something else, sorry. This doesn't work. Hammer or fire rod. Mm -hmm. Does Samaria work on moth? Remember. I... It should, because Samaria blocks do fighter sword damage, yeah. which does damage moth. But Burna doesn't. But Burna's... A different is Durant also fighter sword damage or is it one below that? I don't remember. It is fighter sword damage okay. at least. Had a friend who always got gold sword before moth and vanilla. Yeah, I guess you could <clears> do that. <throat> you just get the fire rod and then leave. I'm curious if that actually only happens in Japanese 1.0. Or if that was patched in the U.S. version, which was 1.3. The the gold sword not working on Moth? Yes. I don't remember. <laughs> I feel like it was, like, I don't remember it ever coming up when I was a kid playing the game, so. Oh, there's I our fourth it. shovel. You're in C-shape, I think. <clears throat> Another ice rod. Nice. Then Camerai, I'm hoping, is going to mirror straight into Eastern and tie those imagine. together, which yeah. always feels good. It does. It's very rare that you get to do that in a seed. But when it do, it's really nice. Really friendly Thieves Town big here in the front of Thieves Town. This is kind of a weird point in the game because we're looking for just a couple items. And despite knowing that there are duplicates of them, you're still like, how? I don't want to skip anything in these dungeons, do I? I think you would just skip the out of the way checks, like left side swamp, mire cutscene, yeah. if you can. You gamble hard that the thing you are missing is not there. Yeah, and like skipping the vanilla big key chest here in Eastern would be fine too, probably. Probably. Not in this case. <laughs> I say sarcastically because the map was there. You absolutely could have left that one. 
Where was the map? What? The map was in the big key chest. In Thieves Town. Yes. Oh, I was talking about Eastern. Mm. That big key chest. You know, the, the chests that people like to skip all the time and competitive. Yes, that one I definitely see uh, skipping. I... Oh no! That Whoops. was <laughs> the, the wrong swap. item. <laughs> hey, at least it wasn't on like a boss fight or something. Yeah. We had that happen last time. It feels bad. Man, I don't remember the last time I accidentally mirrored out. So, I feel like that's a lot easier to do. I probably did it in Dorando at some point recently. Oh, I see. Wait. <laughs> Wait did oh, you, you forgot to check that. Got it. Okay. It all makes sense. It's all coming together. I've checked too much. I should skip stuff. Kind of need to find some big keys for... Alright, here's the idea. We're gonna start the player with all the keys in the game. And we're gonna give you even more duplicates of your items. It's gonna balance out. Has there been modes where people just start with every item? Yes, the MSU testing. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my favorite race mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that you need to do. Is it true, Ice Rod Hunt? Probably. Listen, if you ever want to play a mode where you get that gratification of finding a cool item every time you open a chest, just play uh, the True Pot Hunt, the Triforce, the one where you have to collect hundreds of Triforce pieces. You'll get so excited every time you open, you lift a pot, or open a chest. Fire out for Kamarai. We got that. I wonder when Post Wodex is ever going to make it over to Midi Moldrum Cave, or if that hookshot's just going to show up here in Thieves Town or Village of Outcasts or anything like that. That's the interesting part. You're still hoping. Fingers crossed. Three crystals apiece. Amari is going for the mushroom turn-in. <laughs> going for the gambles. <laughs> Such big gambles here. I do see... <clears throat> like a... I don't know if this is actually what's going through uh, Kamari's head at the moment. Uh, but I do see like, the reluctance to just run for <laughs> Ice Palace, even though you could full clear it in completion right now. It's funny. Yeah, maybe. I I laughing at Hookshot being on blind after mentioning <laughs> where the Hookshot is. All right, Roz, I need you to cover for me for two minutes. I'll be right back. Do funny stuff. I'll be right back. I will do it as funny as I can. A mushroom. As little help as I can be. Oh, camera it looks like it's going to be doing the Skullwoods down into Thieves Town. Vortex still looking for... <laughs> it's another ice rod. That's the... That's the mode to make a true pot hunt slash ice rod hunt where... Uh, you change the sprite of the Triforce pieces to Ice Rod, and uh, the final piece is on Trinex. So you're picking up Ice Rod after Ice Rod after Ice Rod, and none of them are the actual Ice Rod. You're just picking up Triforce pieces 
Yo, we got our boots off Stumpy. Seems like um, Postbook's on the right route. Just gotta find that Samaria and maybe Quake. Maybe? <laughs> vanilla flute. <laughs> Listen, when you got duplicate items, the chances of stuff being vanilla are like, obviously increased. Yeah, this is true. So, it's even less funny. It's supposed to be less funny. It's still funny, though. Nice spin camera. <laughs> oh, look, there's Quake. No. All right. Chad, do you know that uh, if you spin with Tempered Sword, it's equivalent to a Gold Sword damage, and that doesn't work on Moth? Um, unless you do a Slash with a Gold Sword. That's your lesson for today. Told whilst mumbling. So we just need to find Samaria. <clears throat> Why did they fix that one? I feel like... It's complicated. Yeah, there we yeah. go. My guess being it just would have been too hard to change the base coding. Yeah, because it's like... It's weird because... A temperature spin is equivalent to a gold sword. They fixed it so that the gold sword slashes work on Moth, but not the tempered sword spins, or the gold sword spins. So I'm assuming the it's just a- gold sword slashes on Moth were corrected to do tempered sword damage. Oh, so gotcha. That's how they corrected it. Gotcha. Hoopa, hoopa. Good song. So we're just looking for Samari at this point. That's it. Unless, you know, Postbite really wants to find some boomerangs. Maybe. Good choice of looping Swamp together with maybe Moldorm Cave at this point, but not that it really matters because yeah. Moldorm Cave doesn't have anything that Poetic doesn't already have. I just feel like maybe instead of including maps in this mode, you would just get rid of those and just add maybe... I feel like you could add, like, some hearts or something back, maybe. Maybe? What do you think? Throw some heart containers back in instead of having maps? Because mm. the maps don't really do anything in this mode. The maps... I s you I have all your it... info already. Yeah. I suppose it could take from the code of older seeds, where it doesn't, like, have to show you the uh, letter in the dungeons on the interface, but it would show the rewards on the outside, just looking at the map. Hmm. Hmm. Because that way, then you can pull out the maps, and they don't have to actually serve in it. A real purpose. Yeah. Oh, I see where you get it. Forget something there, Camerai. <laughs> nice moon pearl and swamp, you know. <laughs> moon pearl, watch pearl. That it, it proves my point of my analysis of how this mode was constructed, where they replaced junk items with the duplicates, because logically it's impossible to have the pearl here in mm -hmm. Poetic is going for the left side swamp, it looks this like. Is, uh... Sometimes you just, you know, there's a, there's a bit of satisfaction you get out of full clear in a dungeon. If only there was the, the numbers on screen that said how many items you got out of here. I know me personally when I'm playing like a door rando and I, I get all the items in a dungeon, I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I'm satisfied. <laughs> Who knows? There could be two Samarias over here, you know? Anything's possible. If it is, then Poetic's in a tremendous position. To beat all the dungeons very quickly. Definitely. <clears throat> I like the that. Mario Sprite uh, changed to having a 
little snorkel and mask when swimming. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's real good. And also, um, that's Luigi. I know the colors are confusing, but... It is. That's My apologies. Lu that is Luigi? Oh, there's the big key. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Left side swamp hook shot. You know the dream. It's what everybody loves seeing. I don't know how this mode has managed to be so gosh dang funny. And if they didn't already have three hook shots before now. <laughs> for this uh, for this mode, what you gotta do is you gotta set up a tracker that actually tracks. Just like a number count. Oh, they're oh, there you go. <laughs> Okay. What a call. Good job, post poetic. GG's. And then immediately does standard back a swamp. I guess he doesn't know the the diver down. Yeah, I guess if if he did, we would have seen it on left side swamp as well. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> It's okay, it's a stupid trick. And besides, you're in Goma, you don't need the you don't need the water the, the flooded items at this point. I can't believe left side swamp paid off. Now the question is where is the next one gonna be? I would die if it was right here. But we'll never know. It kinda goes without saying that when it comes to playing randomizer in a race type setting. Generally, the goal is to get go mode and then be the first one done. And that is definitely true for this <laughs> I feel like I'm stating the obvious. But like, <laughs> in this mode, there's far more likely to be, I guess, different go modes. Depending yeah. on how silly one of the items ends up being, maybe. Like, you could definitely have a, a mode, uh, you know, you could play a seed of this and end up being in go mode by the time you even hit your first dungeon, probably. As is tradition, a lift upgrade coming out of Swamp. Yeah. Sorry in my life. <laughs> Tried and true tradition. I don't know about you, Roz, but I don't remember the last time I played, like, a standard, like, your, your basic default Link to the Bass randomizer mode. Uh, I believe that was one of my recent tournaments. Like a, like a little casual boots? <clears throat> standard boots, uh, I... maybe? I don't know. I think it was just actually a uh, open map compass shuffle. Okay. okay. I think the most basic one I played probably was MC Boss or something. If I, if I had to guess, but I don't know, man. It's the door randos and the SMZ threes that that got me right now. SMZ three is making a major jump in quality of life and just general play experience mm -hmm. especially with the inclusion of msus yes i i look forward to when they can streamline that process so you're not having to do so many extra steps to get that done <clears throat> it's mostly just one extra step but i do love the msus that and msu which for those that don't know is the custom music you're hearing right now in the game. We're, li we're listening to what, Live a Live remake music that has basically been inserted into the video game. It exists inside the game right now. Um, and it has completely changed how I play these retro games and has kept me interested in them for a lot longer than I'd expect them to. It's very much the same. Like... I don't think I would be playing Link to the Past quite 
nearly as much. Same. If it weren't for the fact that I could just listen to other music as I play. I definitely would not be streaming as much Link to the Past as I do if it weren't for it. That was a game changer, for sure. And it's just, I don't know, it's crazy that it even exists. It just blows my so, mind. Those who are interested, the MSU, it makes use of what's known as the MSU 1 chip in the Super Nintendo, where it can play CD quality music. So the rando devs put in some instructions into the randomizer that says instead of playing the native music when you enter a zone, look over here in the same directory and play this file with music instead. Mm -hmm. Else, just play the vanilla music. So, it yeah, it's, allows you to it's put really any smart music too. you want. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really smart as well that it has, like, a, a fallback in case that file doesn't exist or something and you just get regular music. Mm -hmm. But then you can, have, you can have music like what we're listening to here or, you know... Maybe somebody someday wants to make an MSU pack that's just a bunch of music based on the hit song from the Space Jam movie. I don't know. That could exist. Someday. If you wanted to put the B-movie script in your Zelda, you could. No one's going to stop you. You have the power. I can imagine a Siva <laughs> Gunner <laughs> MSU that has... Bunch of B-movie songs. It's just, it's just the B-movie. It's just the B-movie script. Who would be so brave, huh? I await the day. Well, we're kind of at that part where this is a big moment. Let's see if Camera decides to do Left Side Swamp or not, because otherwise we are still looking for that other uh, Venus Samaria. One of the other three. And, you know, oh, that is an idea. An audiobook narration. Audiobook narration. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of back in high school. You remember, everybody remembers having to do summer reading for school. Um, I had, I got my books as audiobooks, and I just listened to them on tape while I was playing Mario Golf Toad's Duel Tour. That's it. That's all I did. Oh. Has a fairy. I think we should be okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. I was great at Mario Golf, and I got 100 on the test, so... <laughs> Take that, everyone. Well, there's a dead biddy. There's another Quake medallion. I didn't even see what medallion we needed to get in here. I guess... We'll see shortly. <clears throat> I believe it was Bombos. Bombos? Goodbye, goodbye, Samaria. It was Bombos. You are correct. That's okay. Because, like I said, Samaria's going to be right here in one of these flooded chests. Guaranteed. To me, this definitely feels like a mode where... You play it to oh just... Oh my. That is oh. a very interesting uh, diver down technique. I've seen that one done a lot. I think that's the newest iteration of the bomb diver down. Um, yeah. I still use the other one. Because I'm lazy. There's a good <laughs> sword. Because I just don't feel like learning the pixels. <laughs> Um, what I was saying is I feel like this this mode is good if you just like I just want to play Link to the Past Rando without thinking too much because there's really aside from like skipping stuff there's really not much um, mental decisions you have to make in this aside from just like yeah which dungeon do I want to go beat you're not sitting there like oh man I found this behind this item, so therefore, 
these are the places where the other item could be. It's Having to logically parse the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Which is a shame, because that's like one of my favorite things about playing this game, is when you sequence break and find something and then use that information to kind of figure out where other stuff could be. I do enjoy that. But sometimes it's nice to just get a bunch of wacky items and just dunk on everybody. No Samaria in the back of Swamp Palace. Unfortunate. Tamarai's Who knows? Maybe there one looking. there could be one right over here. That right on Bombo's tablet. Lamel is getting a little bit away from post poetic. Oh, I like that. <laughs> the fire rod shot was too early, but it happened to kill the other one first. Uh, 20 bucks. Powder. Oh. I. Meyer was green pit. I don't think Post Poetic ever actually checked the Dark Road map. I don't think so either. I think what might be going through their head, I, it's just a guess, but. It's one of those situations where, eh, it really doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. Yeah. I could clear dungeons. I have to clear them all anyway. Emery's opting for Waterfall Fairy first. Well, that's the thing is, you, you definitely want Samaria for Icebreaker for sure. You do. Oh no, post poetic poor. <laughs> oh no. I better get out that shovel. This is one of the aspects about this mode because there's very little money in the game. You know, there's the green 20s we found every now and then and a couple of the, the blue rupees that have shown up. I believe the tree pull is replaced to always drop red rupees. It's, um, the tree pulls are bombs. That's With right. Each tier is increasing bomb count. The bush crabs are red rupees and magic. And then stun prize is rupees, so. That's what I was thinking of. Right, 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 right. That's one of the aspects of the mode is that those settings are always fixed. You, you shouldn't ever have to worry about farming, though. I feel like, I, I wonder how many people actually check Zora in this mode. <laughs> Probably very few. If you hate doing Ice Palace without Samaria, you definitely put it off till later. Mm -hmm. I know I've, uh, we've talked about this before. People, it's marvelous to see how many people are reluctant to do Ice Palace without Samaria because Icebreaker has been just so common. And if you don't know Ice Palace Bomb Jump or at least unfamiliar with it, it, be, it can be really daunting to make the dive into Swamp. The Ice Palace? Or Ice Palace, I'm sorry. It's, uh... When Icebreaker came out, I was like, oh, that's that's such a cool thing. But it's going to completely change how people interact with Ice Palace. And yes, it has made routing Ice Palace so much nicer, because you know, doing the normal Ice Palace bomb jump every time <clears throat> can be kind of a drag. But I feel like we lost a part of our history because I remember when I first got into Link to the Past Randomizer, that was one of the first hard <laughs> tricks I had to learn. It was like that and Hammer Jump were the two big ones because obviously like Fake Flipper and Spin Speed and stuff like that were pretty standard. But mm -hmm. like I remember before tourney races sitting in the practice hack and just practicing Ice Palace Bum Jump and Hammer Jump over and over. And while Hammer Jump still exists, it's sad to see Ice Palace Bomb Jump not really uh, not really show up as much anymore. I think maybe if you had practice, or rather if you had experience running uh, No Major Glitches, any percent, as a speedrun category, 
Mm -hmm. You have more practice with Ice Palace Bomb Jump as a result, because that's part of the route. Yeah, for sure. With another ice rod. That's, I mean, ice and ice. It makes sense. I definitely still think, because, you know, there's plenty of situations or times where you're going to be in Ice Palace without Samaria that you should absolutely know Ice Palace Bomb Jump. If you don't know it, you are... If you, like, for racing purposes, you are... You're really yeah. shooting yourself in the foot there. Because uh, doing Same this dungeon with, uh, normally is um, bad. Yeah. <laughs> Same with uh, dark rooms. If you're competing uh, against other people at this point, knowledge of dark rooms is probably the first on your list to get down. Because otherwise. Yeah, that definitely shows up more often than I think anything else. Mm -hmm. Just having to go through a dark room. <clears throat> the spooky, you know, turtle room in pod without hand, without a fire rod or lamp. Ah, there it is. There we go. Ah, don't you love to see that? Whether it's Ice Palace or Swamp Palace, Maria is always going to be in there. Man, the seats had all the funnies. Okay, well, both runners are now in Gomu. Right now, Post Poetic has... Amari, where are you going? Uh... <clears throat> hmm. Prob... what? I don't know. <laughs> oh, doesn't have the boots yet. Oh! Didn't even piece that together. So we've this only seen, true. what, the one pair of boots on Stumpy? Correct. And Camera has not been down that way to check. And <laughs> yeah, we did see on post side that the Desert Torch was in the map chest, so not boots locked, but there still is the potential for GT to be boots locked. But the boots are in here. <laughs> wow, I Well, now it doesn't matter. <laughs> Holy moly. That's really funny. <laughs> Don't you okay. love that when you're just like, I need these two items. Let me, well, I mean, at this point, aside from like really crappy one-offs and maybe Pen and Desert, you don't want <laughs> to go there without the palace, boots. Six yeah, head. just go Ice Palace. <laughs> okay, now both runners are in go. Truest of go modes. Because obviously, you know, we don't. When we talk about go mode, we don't. We're not considering like, oh, don't they still need keys? Yes, they do. But we know where they are for the most part. <laughs> They're in their dungeons. Yeah, the GT big is just behind Dragon. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Naturally. camera I switched to. Bombos reminds me of the potpourri where uh, I forgot that it was boss shuffle for a moment so I drop in the arena mashing the Y button and then uh, as soon as I see Argus, oops, the You're animation like, uh, activated. <laughs> I find it more funny that camera used Bombos despite having quarter magic. <laughs> Yeah. Which gives you how many fire rod shots? Like uh, eight normally without half magic, so sixteen with half, and then double that, thirty-two shots. Details, details. <laughs> you know, that is the one good <clears throat> thing about this mode. Is it did bring back quarter magic, which we haven't seen in a very long time. That used to be in just your standard modes. But then they real the the devs or the people in charge of making the presets and stuff are like, this is too easy. Get rid of quarter magic. Put it away. The next change that I want to see is I want to see that rupee count go down to three digits. I want that to be the standard. <laughs> Thank you. 
We don't need that much money. When are you ever going to need 2,000 rupees unless you're playing Shop Sanity? What is the highest you've ever seen in a Shop Sanity setting? Highest money that someone's had at one time? The highest price. Oh, uh, I think 500 is the max. Mm. I've seen... Because that is the price of a shield in Curio Shop. What? Curio Shop? Uh, it's the shop... Um, you know the shop in Dark World south of Bumper Cave? What are you talking about? Oh, the rare shop that sells a yes. fire shield? Is it 500 there? I thought it was 300. 500 there, and then he also sells um, a golden bee and arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I always refer to it as Curio Shop, referring to Curiosity Shop. Oh, cause... okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I've used Curiosity or Rare Shop, just because Curiosity. Sometimes I even, if I'm taking notes, I'll just put question mark shop. So <laughs> like, I know what that means. <laughs> Shorthand. Shorthand. I do remember one time in a tournament, it was a hard mode tournament, where the max shield you could get was a fighter shield, plastic mm -hmm. one. But I had spare money, so I went and bought a fire shield <laughs> from the <laughs> shop, and people watching were like, can you do that? Is that allowed? Because <coughs> so I was like, I need this for blind. Obviously. Numerous times, the... Uh, Red Shield has actually saved me from blind fireballs. Yeah. Uh-oh. Plus, like... having some problems with mm -hmm. uh, Ice Palace Bomb Jump here. A little advice for people that are trying to... For doing bomb jumps. Nice. Gets it done. Um, not just this bomb jump, but just like any bomb jump. A really easy way to get lineup against a hole is you see people charging their sword. You walk towards the hole, release the charge, and then hold back away from the hole. And it usually, if you do it right, you won't fall. You'll kind of just hover a little bit. Um, and it'll, it'll get you that, that comfy lineup that you want to see. Do you eventually hey. want to let go of the D-pad because if you keep holding it, and your spin animation ends, you end up walking forward by one pixel, and yeah. it ruins your lineup. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a it's a tiny thing. I like I remember back in the day when people were doing just the you know the the, the slow inching towards the hole setup or the mm -hmm. the bonk setup with boots to get to like the Hera big chest. But oh, now yeah. just doing the spin so much nicer. I think I learned the <clears throat> walking back, backwards slowly when I was... Uh, originally, it was when I was watching Kelsey. Was quite a little late on that initial spin. Let's, uh, let's start get away, but... I'm not concerned. Also did see yeah. post to use Bombos as well. <laughs> Bombos is just easy. You don't have to worry about getting hit by icicles while you're using the fire rod. Piece of cake. Uses the equivalent of just two fire rod shots. Gives you the other 14 to just unload and uh Krakow Senior. Krakow Senior. It is. Alright, that's Ice Palace done. We just have Turtle Rock into GT into Aga. Easy game. It's always a good feeling of, like... <laughs> Sorry, there was, there was a Samari in Meyer. That's great. That's where <laughs> I would put it. Oh, man. It, it happened. Uh... It happened. Grandpa! Oh my Look! God. It actually did the thing! Get some comments in chat from other people play that played this seed that that was their Samaria. That's really yeah. funny. <laughs> Imagine picking Samarialist Mire over a clearable ice palace. Interesting choice. 
Unless you made the Meyer dip really early, I don't know. I just can't imagine in this mode ever dipping a dungeon that you can't beat. That seems just like a recipe for disaster. It seems like a recipe for you are really gambling on mm. the thing you need being there. But it's funny because of the the fact that there's duplicates that it has a better chance of being there than like in a normal C, right? Very true. So I I love you can't hear it, Roz, and I'm sad for you. The Meyer music right now is really good. I can very, very like faintly hear it, but not very loud on this end. Probably because I don't have um the Discord volume too high. Well, so you can hear it. Well, I can hear it now. Oh. Not when we initially worked this out, though. Weird. Okay. Well. Perfect. Hey, nice fire rod. <laughs> Man, I I love. <laughs> I love when you have those seeds, like the, the normal modes NTR. and you, you like, I'm just going to dip to your real quick and just see if fire rods in that chest. And when it do, you're like, yes, I love it. An equivalency would have been, um, I'm just going to dip I or swamp palace and uh, you get the small key and then check the first chest behind the bomb wall. Hey, look, there's my hammer. That's awful. And soon, you won't even need that. It won't matter. You won't even need that hammer for Swamp. I actually saw that. I was practicing that before, I, uh, before we started. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very easy new trick that someone found where you can skip the first uh, hammer-locked section in Swamp that you need to raise the water. It's, uh... If you've seen Harapot, which is where you line up and bomb yourself into the pot that you hookshot into. It's pretty much the same thing, except instead of hooking into a pot and falling down, you're hooking a statue and just skipping a rail. It is very easy chat. And I would be mm. shocked if it doesn't get allowed, but at the same time, I'm like, that's that's going to change so much <laughs> on it how really people is. play this game. <laughs> like, it is, that's a monumental find. I'm wondering if we're going to see a similar effect that Icebreaker had on the community where people actively um, like wait for the hookshot to go into Swamp, even if they do or don't have the hammer, because they want to do like the skip the same way that people won't go into Ice Palace without Samaria. Because mm -hmm. they really want to do Icebreaker. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I know from personal experience when I'm playing a seed and I'm like starting, I don't have the hammer, but I have the mitts. I start in Thieves Town. I do all the stuff there. And it's like, do I really want to route down to Hype Cave and skip that first check of Swamp without hammer? Because getting back to Swamp is always such a pain in the butt if you have to start at Thieves Town area, Village of Outcast. Oh, yes. But Even now, worse, you have to start at Hyrule Castle. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> the, like that, the gold Agassiz hookshot across the broken bridge and then do yeah. the whole counterclockwise loop. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting to see how that, how that plays out. If it plays out. I don't know. We're at the, the will of the people in charge. For those that don't know, the there is a, a, a group known as the Racing Council for this community. Not my community. The Link to the Past Randomized community. If my community had a, a council, that would be terrifying. I don't, they'd say <laughs> weird things. Um, that kind of uh, look into these tricks and glitches and stuff like that and see if... Uh, it's good for if it's good for the racing scene or not and then they decide on if it'll be race legal they kind of do the deliberations of deciding what does this glitch count as like what type is this 
Uh, what implications does it have on the game in general? And then decide, should this be allowed in a competitive scene? Mm -hmm. What are the implications of uh, race formats and whether or not it should be allowed? I, I was on it for two seasons and saw... Gosh, I think it was on it when, like, Diver Down was found. Nice Breaker. Um, it was interesting peering into the, the process. Um, and then, yeah, at the same time, like, if you want to... This is mostly just, like, it, for, like, the main tournament scene, the main racing scenes, but, like, if you're you want to host your own stuff and be like, all right, that new clip, not allowed. Icebreaker, not allowed. In <clears throat> fact, you're never allowed to go out of logic, ever. You can do that. You can, you can do whatever you want. Like, we have a few friends of the channel here where they have their own community racing where they try to discourage slash prohibit uh, major glitches like Icebreaker, Diver Down, Hair Pot, stuff like that, because they want the race to be a more friendly, kind of lax, mm. not very competitive, and don't want to put pressure on new people to be forced to learn those tricks if they want to keep up with everyone else or to yeah. participate. I know. Which we love those channels and their communities. I know. I have a bad habit when even doing these acings and watching these restreams when I notice people aren't doing the tricks and I'm just like, oh, why are they not doing it? I gotta remember, you know, this is intended to be both a competitive and casual async series, so I don't anticipate everyone needs to, because not everybody wants to race. Some people just want to play for fun. And that's totally cool. And if you don't want to learn silly tricks, that's totally fine. I just gotta remember that I mean, it's just hard for me to get out of the habit of seeing two runners side by side and being like, this is a very important race. When yeah. Happened. This is just... Oh, fun. no. Oh, no. It's okay. It's all right. It's just one try next step. But it's okay, because Poetic did plant a spawning point right there at Laser Bridge. Shout outs to the safety door. Always a good idea to grab that. I think one aspect of when you race or even casually just kind of friendly little skirmish if you have speed ran this game it becomes very hard to turn it off if you know what i mean mm -hmm. where like i always describe speed running as pick a game you love enough to want to hate forever <laughs> Because uh, once you speed run it, you can never play it, quote unquote, casually <laughs> ever again. It will just be ingrained into your mind of how to execute the best, the best uh, strats to go fast. And that will just be the way that you play forever. I think uh, a good way to get out of that habit, something I might try at some point, if I do want to just be more casual when playing, is just don't just turn off the timer. Don't even have the timer. Oh, definitely. Because if you're looking at the timer, you're like, oh man, it's already an hour in and I'm missing this, that, and that. It could really get in your head. <laughs> oh, the hour Luigi, 30 no! <laughs> no! <laughs> the hour 30 mark, and I am getting just my first crystal, crystal of a cross key seed. Oh, I feel so sad. Yeah, it's tough. All right, post poetic. I'm only gonna say this once. Um, you should use that cape. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Or Burna. You can use Burna. That Burna comes out immediately as soon as you open to it. Cape, you gotta wait like a second to use it. But... I, 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 I always feel bad when I see nice boots. A laser bridge. I always feel bad when I see people dying to bosses when they have the resources to save them from dying. Oh my gosh. I was wondering if camera I was going to get 1.0'd. 
Which would have been funny, though. He is opting to plant a spawning point as well. Pink Amory still has the, the fairy as well, maybe? I have not Easy. seen Camry like a duck yet. You can get that, that double spin. I think what happened to post Buttock in the last attempt was that ice was messing him up. Mm -hmm. Stinking ice on the floor. Yeah. Well, it has definitely tied up these two. Has made this very casual, not race, <clears throat> very, uh, a bit closer. It's a weird effect when you see boss shuffle that I noticed this happened whenever boss shuffle is turned on even if Trinix is vanilla the ice does not actually stick to the floor hmm. and any other location that Trinix can be found he doesn't actually create ice floor and I'm wondering how that's coded I'm thinking oh, it's yeah. like it releases a graphical effect along the floor, which strips the current layer that yeah. is in Trinex's room. I one makes me wonder if you can like edit that so you can have Trinex shoot out spikes or something, like turn the floor into spikes. Yeah, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> that would be nutty. I don't know if you've ever seen or played it, but uh, I think it was Purity Wong made a version of the randomizer that has the ability to swap sprites like floor sprites or like uh these torches on here could be turned into or like bemos well maybe not bemos but like the main thing is you walk into a room like where post is now and half of the conveyor belt has been turned into spikes it's uh i definitely recommend you try it out it is very very wacky sounds like an april fool's seed yeah you know <laughs> yeah that's like uh, the ones you'd see in the Willard's highlight video. You should go yeah. check those out. No. Yeah. I was actually working on a highlight video before this. Because I'm, I'm getting behind on those. But if you ever do play that mode, go like the, the best places to go are Hookshot Cave and Spike Cave, because they're very funny. <laughs> yeah. Cursed. They're very cursed. That's That's what I meant to say. Where Turns the heck in this, in this case. is that GT big? Oh, it's right there. Oh, okay, no. well, there it is. The easiest GT big ever. And thankfully, Post Poetic also did pick up their first boomerang. I was worried for a moment. You did it! I was worried for a moment. I was worried for a moment. Though, still missing a blue boomerang and the bug net. So, you know, gotta find those if you want to win the full inventory race. Oh, man. Are you looking forward to the 216 check? Nope. <laughs> I will not play that. That does not yeah. sound interesting to me. Same. <laughs> I, I, I full clear enough in door rando especially when you do pottery lottery that i i don't want to be forced to full clear everything no 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 i won't do it you can't make me not even for money can't make me do it uh-oh 215 where is the one thing that you forgot oh man gotta forfeit the race instead how silly <laughs> i don't know i just feel like the concept of that as a ladder mode it just seems like a, a nightmare I just it's gonna <clears throat> feel like you're gonna have to do a lot more the admins are gonna have to do a lot more race watches and appeals and deal with all that nonsense now if it were for a point based like uh calculation of win or loss i could see a way that it works for instance if you have like the full 216 it's like a plus 50 to your score but if you like win the like if you finish first it's only like a plus 10 to your score or something so even if you lose by you know, 10 20 30 minutes but you manage to get the 216 
then mm. like you can still come back and completely uh, win because you did the actual goal. But sounds like a Mario Party mini game. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to point out that uh, there mm. was Moon Pearl in GT. Yeah. And a Fire Rod locked Fire Rod. Like a, on both of those encompass room. So, you know, very funny. And Camera has experienced the worst part about doing Stalfo's room first is when the big keys hit the stupid fire double fire bar room. I know I've had those. That or like the fire snake room, which is the very next chest. I'm just like, bruh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you it's definitely like a play style to choose which direction you're gonna go. Me personally, I enjoy one of two things to happen. If you find like the big key in hope room, cause you just hope it's there mm. and you can just go. If you find small keys instead, just do a quick rush to compass room because you're right there and it's quick, it's easy. Or if you don't find any of that, uh, just go full left, regardless of what you find in Stalfo's room. Hmm. I, uh... I kind of at the point where I'm like, I just do it the same way every time because the one time I do it differently, it's going to punish me. Yeah. <laughs> so, which I just always go to room to compass room and then full left. Um, the only few times I will change that is if I get like three keys out of Stalfo's room, then I will check the double fire bar room and then mirror and do right side, <laughs> which makes very little sense. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah. These keys got it for right? Also, it's one of those moments that make races like these, where it's just casual, comfy. Not really the worst thing in the world for the race to be decided on uh, which direction you went in GT, because in competitive scenes, too many of that has taken place, where which runner went left? Which runner went right? Mm -hmm. If you went right, you chose poorly. I feel like the only time those are interesting in a race, because I, I don't know, I am not a big fan of races decided by GT routing. I'd rather they be decided by execution. <clears throat> um, is it in, when you're in sword go mode? Yeah. Which uh -oh. I never want to be in sword go mode while I'm in GT, because it's too stressful. Hey, nice. Also, Shadows of Post Poetic was down to like a single heart in the Lambolas 2 fight, and clawed their way back, because I don't remember if they, I think they used both their potions. I think it just has I a B. The bottles are empty, yeah. yeah. For that room post poetic, I'd recommend I always walk towards the center of the room first before I like cape and dash up. And if you wait just so long enough so that the the bumpers are lined up on the, the edges, so you have a straight shot up, um, it makes that a little bit easier. You don't even need the cape in that instance, because I know <laughs> trying to like walk into that door while you have while you're walking on ice is a real pain in the the tuchus. Another, another Moldorm 2 down. Sagatooth is being a bit of a ding-dong. <clears throat> Don't forget, I, um, I, I wonder if either of these runners are going to drop into the Ganon fight accidentally. <laughs> it happens. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, that's fair. Wanting to play it safe. But even if you're, like, wanting to play it safe and avoid damage, like, trying to go... Oh, gosh. Up the center is probably oh, a lot boy. safer. The red balls do do a full heart of damage, regardless <laughs> of your mail. So, 
doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a child, you know? Child at heart. Okay. Rough Agatou 2 fight, but gets through it. Wow, these two are almost neck and neck at this point. The one upside about all dungeon modes where you get to beat Aga last is the full heal before the fight. It's very nice. And Post Poetic does remember. Nice. Okay. I'm sad no one went into the Ganon fight. You know, because for the sake of content, that would have been great. But it's okay. This is better. Yes. I think probably one of my favorite things about the randomizer is the flavor text that Ganon says when you haven't completed the goal. Is, you know, drops in the fight. And he says, you cannot defeat me until you complete the goal. And then if you make it to phase four... He'll taunt you, saying, what, you got wax in your ears? I literally can't die. <laughs> and if you get to him somehow without a bow, he calls you a dingus. Yeah, which you ain't I got love, no bow, you dingus. Because that's one of my favorite words. I, I don't... I, I, I don't... I don't enjoy insulting people too much. Or, or insulting stuff. But if I do, I'm going to drop a dingus or a ding-dong. They're the, the easiest go-tos for me. Post poetic rock in the heart and a half, and we are synced up between the two. Ooh, I definitely <laughs> feel like post poetic is taking their time just because of the low health. Ooh, there's a heart. The blue card just falls for no reason. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be some OSHA. Some, some concerns for everybody here when you're just walking around pits all nonchalant. I think the lore of the game is that all of these were once like normal Hyrule Castle guards who have been bewitched by Oganim mm -hmm. slash Ganon. So, as Link tears through the castle to wipe out Hyrule's forces. How many lives has Link just ended just because uh, he's on his quest to save the world? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Speaking of gotta do, gotta do that. I love the little hooks, the hook speed there in the aggro room. My favorite. I think the furthest I've gotten is like lined up with that left torch. But then you gotta remember to to turn it off so you can get through the curtains. Yeah, because your sword doesn't work. Yeah. When Link gets the Triforce, is... does he did he wish back all the people that he murdered? That were... yes, because uh, the king makes a return where in the opening cutscene the king is actually dead. He's the Stalfos sitting on the throne. And Link wished everyone back alive. Use the Dragon Balls to wish everyone back alive. Yeah. Please revive everyone on Earth that was killed by Cell. <laughs> Please. Sorry, King Kai. <laughs> My bad. Did he only get one wish, or did he get, like, three wishes? Like, is the Triforce, like, a genie in that regard? I think it's... Uh, just a single wish, because Ganon only got one wish, what a and his off. was to conquer the world. He didn't, didn't even do that. Or I guess he did do that. Does that mean Link is stronger than the Triforce, since he was able to undo the Triforce's wish? He made a new wish to counteract the old one. Isn't Ega at the end of a, a All Dungeon Seed such a very fun fight that's not... It's not stressful at all. I know in a race of all dungeons when I'm at this fight, and I'm, I'm just like, my heart is pounding. Yeah, right. Because so there is no way to make that fight go any faster. Yeah. It shouldn't be because you know, like, your opponent is also dealing with the exact same RNG, but it's still just like, come on, no. 
Unless it is SMZ3. Oh, that's it's different RNG for everyone in that? They, yep. they don't do the fixed RNG? Not fixed RNG. Ooh. It is not seated. Gotcha. I've seen races decided by how many blue balls Aghanim decides to give the player. That's rough. What a way to go. I like this play from Postwoodic. <laughs> you want to grab those potions. You got to do what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to drink a liquid before you fight. And we were talking or about this earlier, how the six heart cap, if you're not comfortable with low health situations, it, even with all of the, and the GG's to camera for finishing. Yeah. If you're not comfortable with low health, even with the gold sword, the silvers, tape, quarter magic, it still can be a really scary situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it stacks on damage real quick. Especially like, because usually if you get hit by a fire bat, you're going to get hit by another one. <laughs> fire bats do two hearts of damage with red mail, and then Ganon himself does four hearts. So mm -hmm. no matter what, uh, you're in danger in this fight. Yeah. Nice job, Camerai. You saved the pig and the frog. The uh, You saved the king and everyone and your uncle. Yeah, there we go. Oh, you know what? Hold on. <clears throat> Gold sword, silvers... Don't even have to worry about getting the torch glitch if you don't want to. It's real nice. It's a real comfy fight. This, this is some real comfy music to go with the, the Ganon fight. I know it's not post poetics music. But... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Got the, the slash as he was teleporting away. I do think it's important for anyone playing the game to always play to your comfort level. Because, you know, it's it's better to be safe and slower than to be dead and losing time. But get your GG's in chat for what's what eh? GG's to finish. Take a quick... The rebound rod was on the pedestal. Take a quick second to read uh, comments from these runners that they posted in the Discord about the seed. Camera says, Lum out, this seed was dumb. Hand and boots on right side. I was just saying all the blah, blah, blah. Feel like I played way too conservative and aggressive in all the wrong spots and somehow got rewarded for it anyway. It sounds like Rando. Yeah. Post Whitex says, I got lucky and found Red Cane and Swamp Big Chest for Gaul Mode. Died twice in Trinex for no good reason, but other than that, and going into front of escape, my route really worked out. Nice. Hey, look, I didn't give you guys a bad seed this time. I, I, You cannot look at this seed and be like, yeah, this was a stinker. You, you literally <laughs> cannot. You can't do it that. It had a few of those meme plays in there, like Samaria just being in Swamp, your mitts being in Swamp as well. It had some funnies, but that's not, that does not equivalent, which is a word, to it being a stinker, all right? It's okay. Next seed will be a stinker. That's how it works. Uh, it's Ritrance, so uh, yeah. take small key logic and throw it onto the fire. Yeah, you don't need that. Just do everything. And don't worry about it. Uh, that seed is also live right now if you want to play some retro cross keys with a starting sword. Um, thank you so much to both the runners for... Uh, let me restream your race. Thank you so much. Always appreciate it. If you are interested in um, participating in these, playing these, maybe being on the restream, uh, just head on over to the Discord. Do the funny. We have a forum channel for all the brew crew racing stuff. I have all that stuff going on there. Roz, thank you so much for hopping in. For joining thank me. Thank you this. for having me. This was a lot of fun. Very happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks for again for bringing your community over here as well at the beginning. 
appreciate that. Hope y'all enjoyed watching some watching some ludicrous speed. Never again. We'll never see this <laughs> mode ever again on the Asyncs. Not <laughs> until they create four simultaneous strings of logic that don't interfere with each other. Yes. Because then you're more likely to find things so much quicker. Or ludicrous speed, but it's only the dungeon items. Like you just find all of the big keys in every 24 pod chest. smalls in the game. Make, make it happen. <laughs> all right, well, once again, thank you all for watching. Roz, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. What do you got going on? What are you doing these days? Tell me about yourself. Uh, these days, I am cycling back and forth between playing through the Beast series, currently up to uh, Memories of Calcutta, and making my way through my own 2023 Link to the Past randomizer tournament. Nice. Nice. I do like the Ease games. I'm going to be playing Ease 1 and 2 Chronicles at some point on here as one of my Dumbathon incentives. Maybe that will lead into me playing more Ease games. I do love Ease games, mostly for their music. Gameplay is enjoyable for the most part. I want that, that bump mechanic. I want to bump into enemies oh, man. until they bump die. Oh, man, bump combat. Where would we yeah. be without that? <laughs> the dream. <laughs> Well, everyone, make sure, if you haven't already, to go follow my co-com, Roz, and, his, and follow the runners. Check them out. Support them in any way you see fit. And we'll, uh, we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. <laughs>